Welcome to this video on Principle of Operation of Optical Fiber for Communication Purpose. I am Dr. M. Sumuthi, Professor of Electronics and Communication Engineering. In this video, we will be looking into the basic principle of operation of an optical fiber that is total internal reflection, the derivation for critical angle and the basic structure of an optical fiber and the different types of fibers. It was known in the 19th century that light could be guided along a jet of water by the principle of total internal reflection. The video on the right shows a decorative vase which has plastic fibers. The vase has an LED at the bottom which lights up one end of the fiber and light is emitted at the other end. The third picture shows an optical fiber made of glass which is used for telecommunication purpose and has been lit up. So my question here is considering the plastic fiber or the optical fiber, is the center of the fiber hollow or made of a solid material? That is, is the core of the material, the core of the fiber made of solid material or is it hollow with air in it? We will look into the principle of operation the total internal reflection in the next slide and then go back to this question. This picture shows medium 1 with refractive index n1 and medium 2 with refractive index n2. n1 is greater than n2 that is medium 1 is denser compared to medium 2 and the material boundary is indicated and the normal to the material boundary is shown by red vertical lines. Now considering rays propagating from the denser medium to the rarer medium. Consider the first ray shown which makes an angle 90 degree with respect to the material boundary. It emerges in the next uh, medium without any change in its path. But consider the second row, uh, ray which makes an angle theta 1 with respect to the normal that is angle of incidence is theta 1. This ray gets reflected and refracted. The angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction is indicated by theta 2. Now if angle of incidence increases then the angle of refraction also increases that is the refracted ray moves away from the normal. For a particular angle theta c as indicated by the third ray the angle of refraction is 90 degree that is the refracted ray graces the boundary of the material that is there is no refraction there is only reflection. So for any angle greater than theta c, the light gets reflected and there is no refracted as shown by the fourth ray. So this is a principle of total internal reflection. That is when light travels from a denser medium to a rarer medium and is incident to the respect to the normal at the interface with an incident angle greater than or equal to the critical angle theta c, light gets totally internally reflected and there is no refraction. And this is the principle of total internal reflection and this is the principle based on which light is guided in an optical fiber. You might wonder what happens if light travels from a rarer medium to a denser medium. In that case as the angle of incidence increases the refracted ray deviates towards a normal. So there is no possibility of refraction uh, sorry total internal reflection. Okay, now pause the video for a minute ponder over the question asked. Is the core of the fiber hollow or solid? We will discuss about it in the next slide. This is in a basic structure of a fiber, a core and a cladding. The core has a refractive index N1 which is greater than that of the refractive index of the cladding N2 and light propagates in the core by means of total internal reflection for which N1 should be greater than N2. But if the core is made of air, then N1 is less than N2 because N1 is 1 for air. And in this case, total internal reflection is not possible. Therefore, for light to propagate in a fiber by the principle of total internal reflection, the core has to be solid. This is a basic structure of an optical fiber. The core and the cladding for glass fibers, they are both made of glass. And then they are doped with materials such that the core refractive index N1 is greater than the refractive index of the cladding N2. And then an elastic abrasion resistant material, plastic material is coated over that. This provides 
protection against mechanical and environmental stresses. And then there is a strengthening fiber such as Kevlar which increases the tensile strength and then a cable jacket which provides additional strength and also the color code of which determines the type of fiber. Yellow color for single mode fiber, orange color for multi mode fiber and blue color for polarization maintaining fiber. And these fiber cables or uh, these fibers are bundled into cables and the cable configuration depends on the purpose and where it is being installed. For example, whether it is inside the buildings or underground ducts or underwater. So, based on that different cable configurations are available. Moving on to total internal reflection, before that we will look into the definition for refractive index. Refractive index of a medium is the ratio of velocity of light in air or free space to the velocity of light in the medium. The velocity of light decreases when the material density increases. So, here the velocity of light in free space is more than the velocity in a medium. So, the numerator is greater than the denominator and therefore, refractive index is 1 for air, 1.33 for water and 1.46 for glass. The picture shows light being reflected and refracted. So, considering two media N1, uh, medium 1 and 2 with refractive indices N1 and N2, according to Snell's law N1 sin theta 1 is equal to N2 sin theta 2, where theta 1 and theta 2 are the angle of incidence and angle of refraction. As we had discussed earlier, we know that when light is incident at an angle equal to critical angle theta c, the refracted angle is 90 degree as shown by the red ray in this diagram. So, substituting the value of theta c and 90 degree, we have n 1 sin theta c is equal to n 2 sin 90 degree. Sin 90 is 1, therefore, sin theta c is n 2 by n 1 and critical angle theta c is sin inverse of n 2 by n 1. Moving on to the types of fiber, optical fibers can be classified into various types based on different parameters. First, based on material, we have plastic fiber and glass fiber. Based on the modes of propagation supported by the fiber, we have single mode fibers and multi mode fibers. And then based on the refractive index profile of the core, we have step index fiber and graded index fibers. Based on the material, the core could be plastic and the cladding plastic that is plastic fibers. And then we have glass core and plastic cladding or glass core and glass cladding called the glass fibers. Plastic fibers have more mechanical strength, hence they can be used in abusive environments, when they are, but their loss is high, therefore the distance of transmission is less. Whereas glass fibers, they have low loss and therefore signal can be transmitted over long distances. Glass core with glass cladding fibers are normally used for telecommunication purpose. Based on the modes of propagation supported by the fiber single mode fiber only one mode is supported and this mode travels along the core of the fiber. High data rates are possible and laser diodes need to be used to launch power into the fiber. Multi mode fibers they support multiple modes and the different modes travel along different paths in the fiber. The core radii last larger compared to single mode fibers therefore, it is easier to launch light into these fibers. LEDs can be used, but since different modes propagate along different paths, pulse spreading and intermodal dispersion is more. Therefore, multimode fibers support lesser data rate compared to single mode fibers. Based on the refractive index profile, we have step index fiber where the refractive index of the core is uniform throughout. Figure 1 and 2 show step index, sorry, step index fibers which with for figure 1 is single mode step index fiber and figure 2 is multi mode step index fiber. Please note the refractive index is constant throughout the core. The next is a graded index fiber which has non uniform refractive index in the core. It is maximum at the center and decreases radially outwards and it the profile of the refractive index could be uh, parabolic, triangular and so on. This picture 
compares the fiber structures. The left shows the refractive index profile, at the center is a cross section of the fiber and indicating the ray path as well and to the right is the uh, dimension of the core and the cladding. Considering a first diagram that is a mono mode or a single mode fiber. So, single mode fiber only one mode propagates in the fiber and that propagates along the center of the fiber. So, this is a single mode step index fiber and you can see the, in the core the refractive index is constant, the value is constant. The second picture is of a multi mode step index fiber, it is step index therefore, the refractive index of the core is constant and multi mode it supports various modes and the different modes propagate along different paths as shown in the diagram and the rays get reflected at the core cladding interface. The third picture shows a multi mode graded index fiber. In a graded index fiber, the refractive index changes at every point of the fiber. Therefore, the light ray that is traveling deviates from its path at every point. Therefore, rather than seeing straight lines, we see curved ray paths. Unlike in the second picture where the ray path is straight lines and reflected at the boundary. Here in the third case, in this multi-mode graded index fiber, the ray path is curved, it gets reflected at every point in the fiber. And the intermodal dispersion is lesser for a multi-mode graded index fiber compared to a multi-mode step index fiber. And the multi-mode fibers have a larger core diameter compared to a single mode fiber. For the sake of awareness, we will have a look into what photonic crystal fibers are. In photonic crystal fibers, claddings and sometimes the core has air holes running along the length of the fiber. They are of two types, index guiding fiber and photonic band gap fiber. In index guiding fiber, the core has a higher refractive index and the cladding a lesser refractive index with air holes in it. And photonic band gap fiber has a hollow core with microstructured air holes in the cladding. And the principle of light propagation in a photonic band gap fiber is photonic band gap. So, unlike what we saw earlier, where in a light with a solid core having refractive index greater than the cladding, light propagation takes place by means of total internal reflection. Whereas here in photonic band gap fiber where the whole uh, core is hollow, photonic band gap principle is used for light propagation. The various advantages are high threshold power to support nonlinear effects. The core can be filled with gas or any material uh, for various sensing applications and then the polarization maintaining fibers and bend insensitive that is these fibers have very less loss even when the fibers are bent to a diameter less than 1 centimeter and they are radiation insensitive and can be used in highly radiative places. The applications of a hollow core fiber is high power lasers and sensors. So, to summarize in this video we have seen the principle of operation of an optical fiber that is total internal reflection, the derivation for critical angle and then the basic fiber structure and the different types of fibers. These are the references. Thank you.